afternoon. I pray that you're feeling blessed and highly favored on today. Getting right into things. Michael Irvin and his antics did not pay off. So let me start off by saying that Michael Irvin was for a time period my favorite receiver in the NFL as a child. Him and Deion Sanders were easily my favorite players. You know, uh, really until T.O. and Randy and them came along, they was it. For sure, for sure. You know, uh, my grandmother loved Irvin too. You know, she was, if you were in the 90s, that whole Cowboys dynasty, somebody close to you had love for them Cowboys, you know. I think that's kind of how they developed into America's team. However, you know, I love seeing them come into the, the court and, you know, that mink coat and getting caught sniffing cocaine with a room full of white women. You know, he was just black to the core. You know, there's a hundred percent black man that's done made it. That's just in there showing his ass, you know, but recently he has found an identity in the media lane, which typically everyone must do. You know, that's typically what sells and he has played up to an over the top character, much like Stephen A does at times. Now, the difference is Stephen A is a bit more polished and trained, so he knows when to reel it in. And he also has a very firm grasp on the English vocabulary, so when he has to get serious, he knows how to use language and social intelligence to box his way out of corners that one might place him in. Uh, you know, for example, the Malika Andrews situation where she tried to make it seem like he was trying to bash women this that and the third you know and plus he just overall he's the big dog over there so he can kind of do what he wants to do but um michael irvin's character has been one of the nigga so to speak you know for lack of a better word he is over the top yelling on camera sweating and coming all out his chair and they gotta bring him a towel over there to, to wipe the sweat off his forehead and off his toupee you know it's just very antic field and uh, very funny. You know, uh, I won't take that from him. It's very entertaining. He's found a lane for himself at ESPN and also in NFL Network, uh, just making jokes and slogans that deep. Oh, oh, oh. hey, he funny now. Shout out to Irv. But uh, he's not only very entertaining to the black community, but to the white community as well. You know, white folks love to see black men ah, ah, tap dancing and doing all type of niggerish behavior, man. They love, they don't, they, I don't think they love anything more than to see this uh, type of behavior exhibited in black folks. But, you know, I believe he had gotten to the point where he felt he had arrived. You know, he was believing all the, the praise and the adulation that he was receiving. And, you know, he's friends with all of these white men. And so I think he got to the point where he felt like he was over, you know, to where he was embraced by white culture and America as a whole. And, and no longer the big, mean looking black man that simply scored touchdowns and sniffed cocaine and humped the white honeys, you know, at the White House. <laughs> but uh, basically, he had a image upgrade. You know, and I believe that this is the reason why it pained him so much to see that at the first sign of controversy, um, his perceived allies actually cut ties with him immediately and left him out there on his own to fight. You know, they didn't want to hear nothing he had to say. Oh, uh, he came at a, a, a white woman. They say he talked to her aggressively. OK, yeah, yeah, you're done. Yeah, yeah, get him out of here. You know, and he's supposed to be your homies. I know that hurt him because he truly probably believed that these were his friends. You know, um, he literally is broke down crying several times concerning the whole situation and compared it to a black man being lynched, which I believe is a bit excessive, of course. But when you have done the whole song and dance and you played the game the correct way and only to be treated in this fashion then i'm sure in his heart that this was he felt that this was a proper analogy now i believe the lesson learned here is that no matter how much cooning that you do uh, no matter how much entertainment that you provide to the white man no matter how much adulation or praise that you receive or how many pats on the back and how many nicknames they have for you you are still black and you must never forget that um 
be sure to conduct yourself accordingly at all times and never for a second embrace the ideology or the narrative in your heart because it's one thing to play the game and you know be aware of what's going on and act a certain way but when you embrace it in your heart this is where betray you feel betrayed at you know never embrace the narrative that you're one of them despite everything that they're saying the praise and adulation that you are, that you may receive from these men and for the women for that matter um understand who you are and how you're going to be viewed at the first sign of uh, trouble you know but um yeah shout out to mike man i pray everything works for out for the best and i hope he wins his lawsuit against uh who's that whoever he's suing a young woman the marriott the nfl whoever he's suing man i hope it works out for him man i'm certainly rooting for the brother but you know of course uh, everyone under the sound of my voice certainly be blessed and until the next time take care